my friends. My name is Chris Elliott. I'd like to welcome you to our latest Cyprus scene review from Northern Cyprus. The weather may be about to start turning for the better, and despite the repeated power cuts, we may be able to look forward to better times and weather, and with the return of those annual swallows, visitors, and holidaymakers, if they can afford the horrendous flight costs, and worse still, the lengthy travel times and discomfort when traveling by air to the GNC via Turkey. So, why should this be? There are lots of political arguments about this, but at the end of the day, Northern Cyprus is being kept in an embargo jail by the UN, EU, UK, and the world in general to suit the desires and claims of sole ownership of Cyprus by the so-called Republic of Cyprus, led by a Greek Cypriot administration. Sadly, it was not always like that, and the Turks and Greeks of Cyprus were encouraged to sign a sharing agreement by the British Commonwealth, which led to Cyprus becoming an independent state on the 16th of August 1960. However, the Greeks were not happy with the sharing agreement with the Turks, and tensions continued with violent attacks on Turkish communities, and then with the ultimate breakdown of the new power-sharing government, which collapsed, they saw the Turkish Cypriots being forced out in fear of their lives. Communal violence continued after bloody Christmas attacks by Greek Cypriots in 1963 and after a peacekeeping force was put in place by the Gansford powers of Great Britain, Greece and Turkey. This was followed by a NATO force, UNFCYP, who separated the communities with a famous green line to this very day. Continued violence by Greek Cypriots and Greece with published plans for ethnic cleansing of Turkish Cyprus with the UN failing to stop these activities led to Turkish, Turkey using its right as a guarantee of power to intervene with a peace operation in July 1974. Since then, the UN have failed to find a peace solution mainly as a result of the Greek Cypriots not agreeing to any joint sharing proposals, but then as they were being internationally recognized as the sole authority of Cyprus, why should they agree anything? as they have or are getting all they can ever hope for. So where do we go from here? As the UK are probably unwilling to rock the Cyprus boat by treating the Turkish ship fairly and continue to insist they want both communities to live in a reunified Cyprus state. Why would they want to insist on that? And it's without doubt that they don't want the Greek ships to demand back the areas occupied by the British sovereign bases, which play a major part in international security and defence. So that's a brief roundup of Cyprus issue, which really goes back to the emergence of the mainland Greek Gnosis campaign between 1882 and 1960, which led to the desire of the Greek community of Cyprus to be part of Gnosis without the Turkish community. Now the UN, US, UK, EU and the world in general is facing the land grabbing antics of Russia in the Ukraine and now is perhaps the time to end the Cyprus issue by recognising that a two-state solution is the only way back to peace and prosperity of both communities and help them live side by side and not give in to any more racist land grabbing activities. There we are. Those are my thoughts on this issue. And whilst we've seen many attempts to lobby the UK government to change its stance, perhaps the latest campaign by the British Resident Society of Northern Cyprus may prove to be more successful. Um, I pray that is the case and uh, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.